Sometimes production pipelines get a little messed up and a video that I say should already be out in a previous video is only just getting recorded a few days later. Uh, my name is Tom, otherwise known as Titanium Legman, and this is more Persona 5 Tactica. Hmm. Persona 5 Tactica. Hello everyone, and thank you for once again returning to the channel. Like I said at the top, my name is Tom, otherwise known as Titanium Legman, and when I previously put out my first guide for Persona 5 Tactica, 8 Combat Tips for New Players, I had stated that my basics guide should already be out and would be in the description. And uh, unfortunately, with the way things developed with the news about Unicorn Overlord, I kind of had to shuffle the schedule around. So we're doing that basics video today. I hope you enjoy. If you have any sort of questions or anything like that, by all means, please drop it in the comments. If you are an experienced player of these types of games or you've been playing P5 Tactica for a little while, all of this stuff will be very basic information. It's basically all in the tutorial, but I know it can be a lot of information, a lot of stuff that gets thrown at you very quickly. So having a place where it's all put together for you in a concise format that you can listen to can be very useful. So I hope it is useful for you and that you enjoy. First off, let's start with general mechanics. The most basic and important thing that you need to know about is resistance. This is where enemies or your units are behind cover or on high ground, and as a result, take reduced damage, if not negate damage that is incoming from ranged attacks entirely. Like I said, both your units and enemy units have resistance, and knocking enemies out of cover to remove their resistance and deal more damage is the absolute key to victory. Cover is, of course, an important thing to discuss here. There are two types of cover in P5 Tactica, full and partial. Full cover prevents all ranged damage so long as you aren't flanked, and partial cover will, obviously, partially reduce damage. Cover also grants you resistance, as we just mentioned. Staying in cover is absolutely vital as a result because, well, if you don't stay in cover, you're going to be hit by one more attacks, and knocking enemies out of cover is going to allow you to hit them with one more attacks. What's a one more attack? Well, it's a state that you enter, or an enemy can enter, when they attack a vulnerable unit. This will down the unit and grant you an extra action, or the enemy, uh, and note that this includes both a turn of movement and an attack turn. This is the single most important mechanic in the game and should be your focus during 90% of allied turns. One more can be triggered by normal range attacks as well as skills and persona spells, so it's pretty versatile in terms of how you're able to actually get those extra turns going. Downed units are units that get no benefit from cover and can't counterattack in any circumstances. And being downed can lead to a triple threat. A triple threat is an AoE attack that should absolutely be your main goal after getting one mores, and they kind of combo into each other, so, you know, makes sense. They are triggered after you down an enemy, then surround them with your team and attack them again with a unit that's in one more. If that sounds complicated or inefficient, we'll keep these two things in mind. First, triple threat attacks hit all enemies in the area of the attack, not just the main target. And second, if you've got a downed enemy, that means you've got a unit in one more, which leads naturally into triple threat. Making good use of these attacks is the key to dealing as much damage as possible in a turn. Peak condition is a state that every unit that wasn't used in the most recent battle will be in. This state increases max HP and SP and encourages you to regularly swap between at least six of your units. So you can have one team swap in, swap them out for the next fight. The other six, the relief team will be in peak condition, have extra stats, swap back and forth. You get the idea. You can tell who's still in peak condition based on a glowing blue icon that shows up next to their name. And fortunately, everyone will go into peak condition after you return to the hideout upon completion of a major story section or series of missions. Blocking is something that comes into play when we're talking about cover, as attacks made against the unit in cover, who is not flanked, will be partially or fully blocked. Half cover, indicated by a yellow shield, will block half damage, whereas full cover, indicated by a red shield, will block full damage. Flanking is something we mentioned previously, and it's not a specific mechanic to P5 Tactica, but it is part of how its mechanics work. Flanking is when a unit moves to the side or behind their target before attacking them, and in Tactica, removes the benefits of their cover, because obviously there's not cover in the way of their shot anymore. It should be fairly self-explanatory. Persona Fusion is the act by which you create new personas using your current ones. Creating new persona regularly is vital to your success, as they not only grant you new spells and abilities, but also massively increase your base stats. I recommend checking the Velvet Room after every mission to see what new fusions you can create, so don't neglect it. High ground is something we mentioned previously, and we're going to go into it a little bit more in depth here. Units on elevated platforms, either friend or foe, automatically get resistance against attacks from attackers on lower ground. This gives units on the high ground a clear advantage, and you should make use of high ground whenever possible, so long as it doesn't like conflict with your main mission objective, of course. Like, if you're pushing forward to like a target that you need to destroy, sticking around on the high ground just for its bonuses isn't going to do you much good, right? 
Charge is a state that your units will enter if they end their turn without attacking. This will grant a different bonus depending on the member of the Phantom Thieves who you're using, such as Joker getting an increase to his attack range or Morgana getting an increase to his movement range. Using charge effectively to be able to be a little bit better on a particular turn than you would otherwise be is nice and can just be a passive bonus as well if you don't have anything you can attack on your previous turn. You just get stronger for your next turn. It's not bad. Moving on, we have two different types of unit types to discuss. First of all, we have the supporter unit, enemies and units who, unsurprisingly, support their allies. They utilize healing, damage, and move range buffs to make existing combat units even more powerful. While you, the player, don't have to worry about actually taking up a deployment slot with your supporters since they never actually enter the battlefield and just give you passive buffs, which is nice, enemy supporter units should be priority target number one whenever they show up on the battlefield. As the old saying goes, shoot the medic first, and these things are medic, buffer, and all around annoying jerks. Revenger types is a specific enemy type who counterattacks when damaged. You need to keep an eye on the effective range of these units when you target them and stay out of range of the counterattack before you attack. Notably, once they do execute on this counter, these enemies immediately become vulnerable, so they aren't too scary, you just don't want to give them the chance to deal free damage to you, you know? And finally, we have a suite of different status effects that we're going to bust through in rapid order. This is one of the reasons I wanted to do this video, because there's a bunch of these, they're very important, and it can be hard to keep track of which does what. At least it is for me, since I haven't played Persona 5, so I'm not familiar with these terms. Maybe you know better than I, but we'll run through them pretty quick here and give you guys the lowdown. Vortex pulls enemies towards you, dealing damage and pulling them out of position. This is best used for getting annoying enemies out of cover that you can't reach, and pulling enemies who are out of range into range. Nice. Sleep stops all action from the affected unit for two turns, but they wake up if they take any damage, and like the rest move in Pokemon, the sleeping targets will restore all of their HP and SP at the start of the next turn. So, while very useful, you don't want to leave a target asleep for too long if you've already done damage to them, that way your work isn't just undone. Forget is perhaps the most powerful effect in the game as it just straight up prevents an action for a full turn. No questions asked, things don't wake up, they don't get HP back, none of that, they just are completely stunned. Shouldn't have to tell you that that is very, very strong, and whenever it's possible to use it, you probably should. Dizzy forces random movement for one turn, but also allows normal attack behavior. Uh, it can kind of be thought of as Forget's little brother, who isn't quite as cool or competent, but he's got the spirit, you know, it still disrupts the enemy, but you're not going to stop them from just dealing damage to you, which... Eh, it's fine, it's fine. Hypno forces units to move towards the caster. Uh, this one is kind of situational, but similarly to Vortex, it can be very useful for forcing enemy units out of cover that you can't otherwise deal with or for pulling them into range of units who can't move far enough to affect them this turn. So, still not bad at all, but it's, you want to be just outright destroying things whenever possible, you know, or at least pre fully preventing their action. Then we have Freeze, and if Dizzy is the younger brother of Forget, then Freeze is kind of like the older, slightly out of shape brother who's past his prime. Uh, Freeze also prevents an action for one turn, but like Sleep, is also broken if the target is attacked. It's certainly not a bad option if you need to take something out of the fight for a turn, but it's not your go-to either. Like, use it if it's all you got, but like, try and make things forget if you can. Then we have Burn, and unlike most of the other status options, Burn isn't a control piece, but another DPS option. Burn attacks will knock enemy units away from you while setting them on fire, dealing damage to them until their next turn. So you can push things back, get them out of the way a little bit, maybe move them out of your way to be able to move forward, and then they'll take some extra damage if they aren't just destroyed by the attack outright, which, hey, can't complain about that. Next up, we have Shock, and in the suite of control abilities, Shock is definitely a decent one, as it prevents movement for one turn. It's best used against enemies who either want to get into melee range with you, or who would have to move to hit you with ranged attacks. It's not a bad option at all. I prefer this to Dizzy, because, like, things being able to still attack you isn't ideal, but not being able to attack because they can't move into your range, that's nice. And finally, we have Sweep, which is kind of the polar opposite of Vortex. As Sweep pushes the target away a great distance, potentially knocking them over obstacles and cover in their way, rather than pulling them towards you over obstacles and cover. Uh, similar to Burn, it can be nice to push away dangerous enemies who you're not ready to outright deal with yet. Some big Revenger types, if you just knock them away from you, then they won't be able to jump into range to attack you. They might not be able to reach you with their melee attacks. So it can definitely be a nice piece if you aren't equipped to just outright destroy something. And that's it, everyone. A quick and dirty basic recap of all of the most vital and basic mechanics in Persona 5 Tactica that you need to keep in mind when you're playing the game. I wanted to have a little compendium that people could quickly go through, use the reference point, and have just like a little bit 
of a verbal explanation for what all these different things do, especially if you're not used to strategy RPGs like myself. So I hope that was useful for you, and I hope that you enjoyed. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. I'm trying to grow on YouTube, and it's very difficult to do so, so I'd be very much appreciative, and I hope that you all have a good night. Stay safe and healthy out there, and remember, be good to each other. Bye now.